Well, folks, what an absolute belter of a year we had in 2021. But before diving into 2022, I've had time to reflect over the holiday period of an incredibly busy year, because let's face it, there were some very strong and serious facts on the ground created. So let's have a look at some of the ones that matter. Let's get things rolling then on this A to Z of 2021. Now, adjustability was very high on many people's lists in 2021. Many brands went from formerly closed systems to open ones, whereby not only could you adjust the power between modes, but also you could adjust the amount of support within those modes as well. And we saw this with the likes of Bosch, the smart system, and also the Yamaha on the likes of the giant rain and trans bikes. And remember, you also had the automatic, another A on that uh, giant rain and trans system. But B was all about batteries and we saw some huge improvements in batteries in 2021. 750 watt hour batteries from the likes of the Bosch Smart System and also the giant bike as well. Surely it was the Norco bike which stole the show with that massive 900 watt hour battery. But folks, let's not get too carried away with battery capacity because you can still have fun with say two 500 watt hours do a run in the morning, have some lunch, and go back out in the afternoon. But I think what we will see in 2022 is those large capacity batteries getting a little bit smaller. Well, can you believe it? It's actually almost 12 months since Canyon launched the new Spectralon with the Shimano EP8 motor. And what a bike. It was light, it was lively, it was a great all-rounder, but more than that, it was simple. And I really think people do tend to overcomplicate things with suspension design because this bike really did deliver on performance. However, the Canyon, between four and seven thousand pounds. Now, am I missing something here, folks? Because I don't often see that bike in many people's top 10, but with the same componentry, frame material, and geometry and travel as bikes such as the Santa Cruz Bullet and yet E160, you've got to ask yourself, it's strange that, right? But C stands for many other things in 2021. The Cube Stereo 140, which we took to that massively difficult ride up in Torridon. The Cyber Industries, which we saw in Eurobike. What an incredible bike. And also C probably stands for clean cockpit. And I think we'll see more of that in 2022. And D? D, I would say it's all about the driviness. We saw some great driviness from the likes of Ollie from Saks and of course, the Yamaha PWX3. The EWS saw some incredible racing in 2021, and I'm pretty certain this is where the future of e-mounted bikes will be developed. Not only that, I think it'll be where the boundaries of adventure and racing will blur in the future. But back to bikes, F is for flyer. Now, what a beautiful range of bikes. Great geometry, great componentry, great price, and of course, integrated with that fit system. Uh, now, the great thing about flyer bikes is that they come with both the Panasonic motor and also the Bosch motor. And I have to say, I think they're pretty good looking bikes. What do you say, Jack? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, moving on to G, gearbox and motors is hopefully something we'll see more of in the years ahead. At Eurobike, we saw the likes of FEV, Revante, Cavalier, and of course, Maxon on that beautiful looking Transalp bike. But folks, let's know your thoughts on the future of gearbox bikes. H is for Husqvarna or Husqvarna. So happy for those guys to be a new partner brand on EMBN this year. Integration certainly took a step in the right direction. Last year, we saw the already brilliant Levo introduce the Mastermind display. We saw changes to Shimano. We saw, we saw the new Bosch smart system. We saw the Yamaha on the giant bikes. And let's not forget that amazing Rocky Mountain. Wow, already, as you can see, that's quite a lot of developments taking place last year. But I want to take a breather for, for a minute just to ponder some bigger picture questions because one question I get asked more than anything else is, what is the best e-mountain bike? Well, do you know what? It depends. It depends on where your riding is weighted towards. Is it weighted towards more downhill, cross country, enduro, adventure? Because ultimately it depends on you. Because I think we're actually moving away slowly from that one bike fits all scenario. Because uh, a lot of 180 bikes, 
and 140 bikes are still very relevant depending on the type of riding you do. But what about motors, folks? Well, I'm going to move on to that a little bit later on. But one thing I will say is there's some great motors out there. I think all the motors are brilliant, but it is pointless having a great motor without a great system. And when I say system, I mean things such as the battery, the geometry, and the sizing on your bike, because those all affect the performance of your bike. Right, folks, let's dive back into our A to Z, and K has got to be for Canevo SL. Now, this could well be the bike which converts my colleague Neil Donahue to full-time EMTB. I think he's gone from an affair to a full-time marriage made in heaven. From my point of view, I've had lots of experience on that bike, and I consider it to be one of the fastest E-Man bikes downhill, for sure. L has got to be for the new Shimano Link Glide drivetrain system. More durable, less shifting mistakes, and of course, less cost for you guys. L is also for lightweight. We saw the Orbe Rise, we saw the Rottweil, and of course, the Levo SL. M has got to be the Merida, and in particular, the E140 bike. Now, I don't really get to ride many 140 bikes, but that bike really did deliver in the tough conditions of Dartmoor. And N. Norco. Now I mentioned earlier that 900 watt hour battery, but for me what does it is their online bike setup guide, which is a very valuable resource for all riders. Oh, got to be the old bear eyes folks, got to be the old bear eyes. Sub 18 kilos, 16 newton meters, fantastic geometry. Wow, what a bike. I'm moving on to P. Now myself and Jack did our tour of Northern Italy back in the summer and we visited the Polini motor plant where we got a really in-depth look at how a motor is put together. Great guys, great motor and we also got to ride that on the Accept bike in the Finale region. What a place. Ah crikey, this is uh, taking some concentration to think about through this. Now uh, motors, right, uh, let's have a break again before we go into the final R to Z. Right, now motors. Shimano EP8, now some people consider that to be one of the weaker motors. All I'll say is go and spend a day with Chris Akrig on the rocks and you will be proven otherwise because that man could take that EP8 into places which no other person can go to. But on the subject of motors, now folks, I've ridden pretty much all the motors and I will genuinely, genuinely tell you guys that I have fun on all of those motors, as long as the bike and the geometry and the sizing and the componentry is part of a good system. But within that, I think there is some fine detail. Um, we talked about geometry and sizing earlier, because let me give you an example. Like back in, I think it was September, we had the track rail uh, 2021 versus the track rail 2022. Now, I rode both bikes in size large, but there are some key differences. Uh, and that is in the C-tube angle, the wheelbase, uh, and also the reach of those bikes. Now I put both bikes head to head on a three minute climb. Remember, same motor on these bikes, just the smart system uh, has different adjustability options on it. But I put five seconds in on the 2021 bike. And the reason for that, I think, is because of the increased space on the 2022 bike, steeper C-tube angle because uh, that allows you to get further over the front and the reach allows you to move around the bike a bit more so you can hunt down the grip. So not just about the motor folks, because you could say that a, a Shimano bike with geometry which, which is better than a Bosch bike with bad geometry could in fact be faster. So folks, there's lots to think about, but do you know what? Bottom line, if you want a motor which is gonna power you up a, a fire road or a tech climb faster than anything else, you can look at the TQ or that 108 newton meter Rocky Mountain. So R then, uh, Rottweiler, the Rottweiler RX375. Lightweight, long travel, beautiful looking bike. Also that Raymond bike, which we saw out in Munich. R takes us to S, Scott Patron, Bosch Smart System. I'm on the fence about this, folk, this bike, folks, but uh, let's know your thoughts. But you know, the integrated uh, shock absorber, lots of adjustability, don't know. Not so sure. It takes the line between a minimalist e-bike to one which is pretty complicated. T. Ah, of course. Tong Shen. Now, I don't know if this video has come out yet, folks, but uh, if you want to convert a mountain bike which is gathering dust in your garage, it is lightweight, it is high power, it is simple to fit, 
and it'll give you or your family or your relatives uh, new life in something which is sat in the corner of the shed. Uh, something a little bit more hybrid is the track rail. Now we rode the track rail both here and abroad in Moab. Had a great time, uh, whatever the conditions. I think it is certainly one of the highlight bikes of this year. But what makes it great bike? Like I said, a lot of people overcomplicate their e-mountain bikes. The track is light and it's lively. And that is a key feature of an e-mountain bike in my eyes. As to is you. And you guys, thank you so much for supporting us uh, this year. And uh, we've got lots more coming in 2022. I guarantee you there will be even more developments in the year ahead. V has to be one of the greatest downhill racers ever and the double EWS E-Man Bike Champion, Nico Vulios. Uh, X, big kiss for you guys. Y, got to be the Yamaha Pedrex 3 and also possibly the Yeti E160, fantastic looking bike, which they say is the world's first e-mountain bike race bike. Now, I strongly think that Lapierre and Nico Rulliaz with Overvolt will probably have something to say about that. And Z, probably time for me to sleep and get some energy for the 2022 year ahead. Folks, let's know your thoughts. Obviously, lots to talk about here. Don't forget to give us a like if you like this video. Like us a thumbs up and subscribe to EMB Angles. It'll help us massively. So, see you on the hill and the shows and in the saddle and behind the cockpit and in the motors, displays, whatever comes in the year ahead. Great for you guys to be with us.